Hi, my name is Sarah evans Wallman. I'm proud to be a part of the AYA program, welcoming young people from all over the world to the United States and helping them settle in and adapt to living in this new environment. AYA is one of the most well-respected high school homestay programs in the United States, and we've successfully sponsored more than 35,000 students from all over the world. The AYA support staff has a lot of experience supporting students through all kinds of issues and is committed, above all else, to providing you with the tools and support to ensure that you have a safe and rewarding year ahead. In my own travels around the world, I've learned that while we have a lot in common, there are also many differences between us. This is what makes travel so interesting and sometimes so challenging. I also know that in each country I visited, the advice I received from those who lived there helped me feel safer and more comfortable in my new surroundings. AYA has created this informative safety video to help prepare you for your stay here and ensure that you have safe and rewarding experience. Some of these things you may have already thought of or wondered about, others may be new to you. At AYA, we say knowledge is power. So let's get started. In your home country, I'm certain you feel comfortable and safe. You know how to act and what to expect from other people. Once you arrive in America, you may feel a little unsure of your new home and new life. The great news is you have a broad range of support during your stay. AYA has an excellent network of professionally trained local coordinators who serve as the main contact for students, host families, and high schools. They're trained and prepared to help you over the course of your stay and will have monthly contact with you and your host family throughout your program. Local coordinators are recruited, trained, and supported by the staff at the AYA office in Stamford, Connecticut. Your local coordinator's main responsibility, once you've arrived, is to ensure that you're safe and that you feel supported as you navigate through this new and exciting adventure. Safety is AYA's number one priority. In this video, we'll give you some tips to reduce your risks during daily activities and prevent crisis situations when possible. Remember, if you have any safety concerns or simple daily problems during your time in the US, we encourage you to speak to someone you trust about it. It could be your host family, your local coordinator, or someone at AYA, or any adult you trust and feel comfortable with. Please listen and watch carefully as we share with you the important information we share with each and every student. Let's start with you. What steps can you take to protect yourself? Here are 10 easy tips to help you protect yourself on a daily basis. Number one, know where you are and where you're going. Familiarize yourself with your community, get addresses of places where you plan on going, and be aware of any parts of town that you should avoid. Always be aware of your surroundings. Number two, stay in groups. Never walk alone at night. Number three, don't ride with strangers or with anyone without your host family's permission. Number four, always have a list of important telephone numbers with you, your host parents, host brothers and sisters, local coordinator, and AYA's hotline. Number five, always tell your host parents if your plans change. Number six, never put any personal or private information on the internet about yourself or your host family. Number seven, Protect your personal belongings. Don't leave laptops, cameras, or money lying around. Number eight, don't carry large amounts of cash with you. Number nine, put your money in your own banking account and don't give others access to it. Never borrow or loan money to anyone, including your host family. And 10, always have your AYA identification card and medical insurance information with you. Now that we've covered some simple steps for your safety, I want to discuss a few other health and safety concerns that could affect a teenager living in the U.S. Adapting to a new culture and being far away from home will undoubtedly cause some adjustment issues and a range of feelings, sometimes high and sometimes low. While it's completely normal to experience feelings of sadness, loneliness, or anxiety, it is important that you discuss your feelings with your host family, your local coordinator, or an AYA student support team member. Your AYA support team has a lot of experience helping students through homesickness, culture shock, and adjustment issues while on program. We can help support you through these challenges so that you can enjoy a positive and rewarding experience. If you are experiencing more lows than highs, 
or persistent feelings of sadness, anxiety, or depression that are not associated with homesickness or your adjustment, it's important for you to tell someone. These feelings can be overwhelming and difficult to process or talk about, but with support from AYA or a trusted professional, you can get through it. Talk to your host family, your local coordinator, or an AYA team member, or anyone you trust about how you're feeling. We are here to listen. For some students, feelings of sadness may become so overwhelming that they may consider harming themselves. Some students have heard that cutting themselves or self-inflicting injury may help reduce the pain or anxiety associated with these negative feelings. This is not a healthy or sustainable way to cope with these feelings. If you or anyone you know has or is thinking about hurting themselves in any way, it's imperative that you tell a trusted adult. As a program, we're here to support you, guide you, and help you navigate these difficult feelings. We have experience in counseling students and will make sure that you get the support and help you need to feel better. Another teen risk we want to discuss is sexual abuse. Sexual abuse can happen to anyone, regardless of age, gender, race, or social status. So while I understand this topic's a hard one to think about and talk about, it's definitely something we need to discuss. Teen sexual abuse is any sexual act between an adult and a minor or between two minors when one holds power over the other. In the U.S., a minor is usually anyone that's under the age of 18, but the age of a minor varies from state to state. It's a crime for anyone to force or coerce anyone into engaging in a sexual act of any kind. Rape is a form of sexual assault, usually involving sexual penetration of a person's vagina, mouth, or anus without that person's sexual consent. Sexual abuse not only includes sexual contact such as touching, intercourse, or any type of penetration, but also includes acts such as exhibitionism or when someone exposes their genitals on purpose to attract attention or cause sexual interest, exposure to pornography, intentionally looking at an individual's naked body or genitals without the victim's knowledge, sharing or asking for sexually explicit photos via social media, or sexually explicit or suggestive communication, including in person, by phone, text, or internet. Remember, sexual abuse is not always an action of physical force, but it can be one of persuasion by someone with authority or power over you. As an exchange student, we don't want you to be fearful of those around you, but we do want you to be educated and empowered so that you can report any concerns to AYA or a trusted adult if you ever find yourself in a situation that makes you uncomfortable. Every culture and country has a different set of cultural and social norms. As an exchange student, there will be times when you may be confused about behavior and what's culturally acceptable and what's not. One of our main goals is to make sure that you know what to do and keep yourself safe and that you have the tools you need to speak up if you ever do feel unsafe. We've created a list of behaviors and actions that are considered socially and culturally appropriate amongst most Americans. Now, we'll share with you different actions and behaviors that are socially acceptable or not regarding your personal safety. Positive or appropriate displays of affection could include brief hugs, pats on the shoulder and back, a handshake, high fives or slapping hands, verbal praise, a brief touch on the hands, face, shoulder or arms, an arm around the shoulder, holding hands during prayer, or a brief kiss on the cheek. While the behaviors we listed are considered appropriate, it is important to recognize that each individual has his or her own personal boundaries. Talk to your family honestly if you're not personally comfortable with any of these affectionate behaviors. Your host family wants you to feel comfortable and happy, and you should feel free to express yourself openly or ask your local coordinator to help you express yourself in the beginning. We've also created a list of behaviors and interactions that are not appropriate. Examples of inappropriate physical contact include frequent and inappropriate or lengthy hugs and embraces, intentional brushing against a person's body, patting, or pinching, an adult holding hands with an exchange student, kisses on the mouth, a student sitting in an adult's lap, touching bottoms, chest, or genital areas, showing affection in isolated areas like a bathroom or bedroom, laying on or in bed together, touching of the knees or legs, wrestling and tickling, or any type of massage. Inappropriate behaviors include written or spoken compliments referring to body or body development, giving excessive or expensive personal gifts or money to a student, encouraging private meals in intimate places, flirting, jokes with sexual or inappropriate connotations, lewd, sexually explicit language and conversations, 
sharing or asking for private and or sexually suggestive photographs, asking a student to keep a secret, confiding to a student about marital or financial problems, inappropriate text messages or digital communication, or allowing a student to break a serious program rule or U.S. law in order to build their trust. We would also like to share guidelines for healthy boundaries and examples of how to practice modesty to make sure everyone in the home feels comfortable. Wear a robe and or pajamas at all times. Nudity on the part of the student or host family is not acceptable. No contact between the student and an adult in underwear. Avoid revealing clothing, things like very short skirts, pants, low cut shirts or tank tops, or very tight clothing. Students should respect the family and school dress codes at all times and dress appropriately in and out of the home. Discuss protocol for entering bedrooms and what areas of the home are off limits and or require notice before entering, places like the master bedroom, bathrooms, or the student's bedroom. It is never appropriate for a member of your host family to initiate any type of sexual contact or communication with you. Likewise, it's never appropriate for you to initiate such contact or communication with any member of your host family, including a host sibling. If at any time you develop romantic feelings towards a member of your host family, please contact your local coordinator or your AYA regional director immediately. Sometimes sexual abuse can occur between two teens who are dating, friends, or recent acquaintances. Here are some tools that will help you feel more prepared and empowered when you're out with your peers or dating. Trust your own feelings. If you don't feel comfortable in a situation, remove yourself from it immediately. Call 911 for help if you're in an unsafe or dangerous situation. Be careful when inviting someone into your home or going to someone else's home. Most date rapes occur in homes. Communicate with your date or your friend. Be clear with your date about what you're comfortable doing. If things start to get out of hand, leave immediately. Make your feelings loud and clear. Don't wait for someone to come in and help. Use caution when going out with someone new. Ask friends about this person before you go out together. Listen to your friends or host family. If a particular individual has a negative reputation, avoid being alone with that person. Don't feel you have to go on a date alone. It's common and preferable to meet up with a group of friends in a public place. Socialize with people who share your values. If you hang out with someone who's more sexually permissive than you, they may expect you share their values. Be aware of high-risk situations. Be prepared to take care of yourself. Talk with your friends about date rape. Help everyone stay safe. If alcohol and drugs are involved, it's important to be aware that they change your ability to make safe decisions about sexual behavior. It's important for both boys and girls to know that an individual who's under the influence of drugs or alcohol cannot legally give sexual consent. If an individual is intoxicated and does say no, or even if they say yes, it may still be considered rape. Likewise, if the accused person was impaired at the time of the rape, criminal charges will still be pursued. Here are more tips on how to stay safe. Do not drink alcohol or use drugs recreationally. Not only is this against AYA program rules, it'll impair your judgment and compromise your safety. Be cautious of being given drugs without knowing. Be aware of your surroundings and of drinks or food offered to you in a strange setting. If you have been raped or sexually assaulted, you should take the following steps. Call 911 for the police or emergency services. Tell your host family. Call your local coordinator or contact AYA's 24-hour emergency hotline. Tell someone you trust as soon as possible. AYA has a great deal of support and resources available to help support students through any crisis will support you through any major issues and ensure that you're supported while you're here. Please understand that this video and the content that I've discussed is not intended to scare you. We do not want you to fear your host family or any other adults or friends you may encounter while you're here in the US. What we do want you to know is that at no time ever is it appropriate for any adult or individual, regardless of their age or relationship to you, to ask or coerce you into doing anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, sexually or otherwise. We want you to have a voice and use it. 
If at any time while you're on this program, you're in a situation where you do feel uncomfortable, concerned about an adult's behavior towards you or unsafe for any reason, we want you to contact us immediately. Your local coordinator is available to support you locally, but if you prefer, you can contact our national office at any time to speak directly to a member of our student support team. Certain types of sexual contact, physical or otherwise, may be illegal. AYA will cooperate with authorities to the full extent of the laws and is mandated to report any allegations to the proper governing bodies. Our goal is to empower you and give you the knowledge, tools, and confidence to be an advocate for yourself and your own safety. AYA will be here to support you and do everything possible to ensure that you have a safe and rewarding year, but you need to help us by taking responsibility for your own safety as well. Whether you're feeling down and need some guidance or have a question about a certain interaction you experienced, your support team is here to help you. Lastly, I want to assure you that any risks we've discussed are quite rare. The overwhelming majority of our students come to the U.S. and have a safe and unforgettable experience. While many students will experience minor adjustment issues, almost all of them will tell you that those experiences have helped them learn, grow, and become a more independent and well-rounded person. I'm confident that you will each have a wonderful year and the entire AYA team wishes you a safe, happy, and life-changing adventure.